I got a phone call about two months ago. I was actually at Memphis in May. We had just won the world championship with Tuffy. We're on cloud nine. I get a call from Fat Apple. They say, hey, the meat stock crew's heading over to some Brazilian barbecue festival. Do I want to come? Hey, why not? Such a good move. It's a, it's a big deal here. It's the uh, meat stock of festivals. They're cooking amazing things. The smells are amazing. It's best described as sort of a rave of barbecue. People show up to an undisclosed location. They barbecue, they try meats, they try vegetables. It's the most amazing thing I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot. The thing that impresses me most about this festival is just the collaboration. As much as this is about meat and barbecue, it's not about meat and barbecue, it's actually about people. This is probably one of the greatest ensembles of barbecues and pitmasters in the region. Not just pitmasters like American Low and Slow, grillers and Argentine style and Brazilian style and guys cooking in pits, guys cooking steaks and cooking vegetables and and offsets, it's probably the greatest collaboration of barbecue and solid fuel cooking that I've ever seen or ever imagined. I'm Rogério de Betty from Brazil. I'm a butcher. I'm a fourth generation of butcher and a partner of Churrascada with Botino and Felipe. And when we create Churrascada, we create just to have fun. With good meat, well prepared, good beer, good drinks, good music, and good people, we are in the heaven. Uh, this is in our DNA from the, our past. And when we connect all these things together, we get crazy. That's the Churrascada. Welcome my friends from Midstock, from Australia and from around the world. It'd be a big honor to us have you here guys. Thank you so much. So when we come to the booked into the festival, they asked us to cook something. What's more Australian or New Zealand than lamb? Nothing. So we had to do lamb shoulder. When we rocked up in there, I wasn't sure about the barbecues, but you know, we cook on these offsets a lot and the Brazilian's barbecue, it's almost identical to the ones we're using. Big offset, 120 shoulders in there. Get it up to 350 and jam them in there and cook them. Doesn't matter whether you're in Brazil or whether you're in Australia, the process is the same. We're getting ready here. The boys, they need a bit of supervision. So why don't we go over there and have a look at what they've been cooking. This man simply needs no introduction. But for those of you at home who don't know who he is, this is Glenn from Back Bear Barbecue. <laughs> oh no, it's not. It's Hayden. Owner, <laughs> entrepreneur, yeah. Black Bear Barbecue fame. Yeah. Teaching me how to cook a piece of lamb. Yeah. Well, you Kiwis need to know. So we're, we're, I'm here to show. And doesn't it look gorgeous? Look at it. We've cooked on orange wood and pecan wood. I've never cooked on either of those. We've got 120 shoulders in here. We've got a minty lamb thyme rub on there. A little bit of spice. We're just cooking them so we can just pull them apart like that. We started at 4 a.m. this morning, so that would be done by 11. We've got a beautiful pea zucchini puree. As you can see, our boo's proudly showing you. Uh, we think the people here are going to love it. Just keep that pee off. The There's 14 of us here in Sao Paulo today. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! Oi, oi, oi. We've got butchers, we've got barbecuers, we've got hangers on. We've even bought George. Just tried the lamb and it came out amazing. It's 
it's been great to work together as a team to put it together. Represent Meat, meat Stock Crew. I'm Clarice Schwarzman from the south of Brazil and I participate in Churrascada since the beginning. I love this uh, place, my colleagues, this energy. Here we can do miracle, we can do magic and we love it. We started smoking this since 5 a.m. in the morning. It looks brown and it smells like orange tree and apple tree. So we put here to start another process. It gets caramel, sweet, something amazing that you have to try once. It's so good, we like hair rare, so outside it's this brown, this mylar reaction, but inside it's rare. And so, we put some salt after, and then we introduce this sweet, from a fruit, Brazilian fruit. We cry here, so much smoke, but it's so great. It's a meat mango. In New Zealand, we thought we were the pit masters, the hangi pit masters. But my Argentine friend here is showing me the way that they roll here. They take a whole wagyu cow, they cut the beef ribs out and they cook those over bamboo real slow. Then they take all the subprimals, cut them into about five kilo pieces. They put them into a bit of a ball, they wrap them in foil and wax paper, then they cover them in mud from the Amazon jungle. Leaves. They put them inside these pits, cover them with coals, and they cook them for about five hours. When it's finished, the encasement is hard like an eggshell. They crack into it, they get in there, and the meat's deliciously tender, cooked in its own juices. That's Wagyu cooked inside Wagyu. A lot of people are coming here to Churrascada to eat, to be entertained. What I've been is I have been entertained and I have eaten. I've eaten well, but I've been inspired. And how you present your barbecue or how you cook, it's truly inspirational to come to something like this and learn from the most passionate people in the, in the world. I'm sure even the meat stock crew benefited from coming here to be inspired about what's possible. I have to have one. I must have one. I've got to have one. Darling, this is as ridiculous as the first time I came and asked you if I could build a big offset barbecue. But I must have one of those and I must build one. Let it come and take my heart. Let your spirit lose control. Let it come and take my heart. Let the song inside your soul. Baby, come and take Everything the Brazilian do here at Triscata is over the top. You've seen the Turks do it. This is how the Brazilians take the Turks recipe and they one-up it. Whole chicken marinated in satay, cooked over live fire. He's cooking it, he's got the most amazing salad I've ever smelt, and I'm a meathead. It's a Brazilian version of a Turkish favorite. Can't wait to get my lips around this one. Let
let your spirit lose control. Baby, come and take my heart. Let the song inside your soul. Baby, come and take my heart. Let your spirit lose control. Baby, come and take my heart. Let the song inside your soul. If you're going to throw the biggest meat festival, meat party, the coolest meat party in the world, you have to bring the Japanese along for the ride. Check out the marbling on this steak that they've got. Renowned for their steak quality, these gentlemen have come in with their A5 beef. Now, beef is graded in terms of marble score. It goes from a 1 all the way up to a 12. A5 starts at an 8. It's highly marbled, it looks like a spider web in there. And these gentlemen here today are preparing A5, which is the equivalent of a marble score of 10, 10 plus. They're gonna cut it like the Japanese do into just the smallest portion, it's very rich. And then you just take the smallest amount and it'll blow your mind how good it is. I've only ever had it a couple of times. Occasionally we get to cook an A5 brisket. I can't wait to try what these gentlemen are preparing. Who would have thought, you know, I've travelled all through the US, bump into Wayne here of Mueller's Barbecue fame. He's doing a beef short rib. How are you enjoying the festival? This is an amazing festival, man. I've never been to anything like it. This is, this is what you dream about when it comes to festival. And believe me, if a guy who's multi-generation barbecue out of Austin is saying that, it's really something special here. It is something special here. I'm here with Mike Johnson, Sugar Fire fame. He's cooked at Memphis. He's cooked all over the place. Yeah. Tell us what you're doing, Mike. Uh, I'm just doing, I'm from St. Louis. So uh, the classic rib in the States is a St. Louis cut rib. And so I'm, I'm just doing ribs. We all know about your good work. Can't wait to come back and try it. Yeah, buddy. Is this not crazy or not? We've got a, a dome of, of swine apple, we've got pork loins cooking, we've got pineapples. The pork chops have been number two salted for about five days in a dry salt brine. Uh, they've got some sage on there. I wish you could smell it, it smells amazing. They're using all lump charcoal, it's actually quite hot. All the skins are facing down to get that crackle build up and I'm in love. I think I'm in love. Yeah, we've got Duroc ham that's been cured for about five to seven days. They're so smoking it over applewood here. She's got it hanging on butcher's hooks, but it's also being contained with the smoke to make sure it develops those smoky tones. After about eight hours of hanging like this in the smoke, they then move it into the offset to finish it. This amazing King's Offset cooker, it's Polar's secret recipe glaze that goes on next. They smoke it, bring it up to temperature, and then they're gonna slice it and put it with a pineapple and jalapeno jam. And I can't wait to try this one. Barbecue actually, it transcends language. 
as soon as you come to places like this, you're welcomed by the people. Because when they see you as a barbecue and you see them as a barbecue, language doesn't become, it's not important. What's important is the love of barbecue, the love of the process, the love of the product, the love of the end result. The creativity here is actually just really inspiring and mind blowing. I think everybody comes here and thinks, wow, this is amazing. It's really the ultimate place to take barbecue Instagram photos. What I love about Tarscata here is it's not about the fancy appliance. It's actually a really simple thing. Cinder blocks, some bamboo poles, a bit of a thatched roof, and a premium Angus OP rib hanging there. The most important thing is the person and the meat. Sometimes we think the barbecue is the most important thing. It's actually what goes in the barbecue that's important. Those of you who have seen Instagram tomahawks, those get cut into tomahawks. That's the ribeye plus part of the short rib still attached. Very difficult cut to cook. Tightness of the short rib on there, but you've also got the tenderness of the ribeye. I love what I'm seeing here. They're gonna reverse sear it, cook it super low and slow, get some smoke on it, and then they're gonna get their grill ready to blast it and fry it off. All the way from Dubai. And he's, he's running his deal in Dubai. I'm running my thing in New Zealand, but we're brothers of barbecue. Hearts, hearts right there. Hearts. Beef hearts. There you go, bro. <laughs> We've done Butcher Wars in Sydney, we've done it in Melbourne, and we've done it in Auckland. Who would have ever thought we'd be doing it here in Sao Paulo, Brazil? The Australians, the Brazilians, the Canadian butchers, they'll be going head to head in that half hour battle, in that crazy intense moment where they're preparing their retail cuts. This whole Butcher Wars thing has just united, united this festival with our festival in New Zealand, our meat stock festival in Australia. We'll be cheering them on. Go the Kiwis, sorry, go the Canadians. No, go the Brazilians. It's just wonderful to watch them actually. Triscata, I can't, I don't really understand the concept before I came here. I tried to understand it on Facebook, Instagram. Really it's, it's just, it's a meat wonderland. You know, it's, it's about these products, these, you know, these are local purveyors of, in this case, sausage. It's about showcasing what they, they love and they're passionate about. Whether it's a sausage or a lamb or a chicken, Triscata is the opportunity to share whatever your deal is in barbecue with the, with the world. You can barbecue anything if you're creative enough and if you're patient enough. I've tasted some of the most amazing things here. I really thought I had barbecue competency. I've cooked with some of the biggest names in southern style barbecue. But the things my tongue and mouth have experienced here are just the flavours and the the textures that I've enjoyed have just been mind-blowing and it's opened me up to a whole new world of possibilities. We cooked lamb, we cooked 120 shoulders of lamb we cook pork belly, we cook beef steaks, we cook probably 100 kilograms of beef steaks. It's uh, about uh, five o'clock, we're all sold out. The locals loved the lamb, they thought it was amazing. They even liked the pureed pea with mint. We love cooking it and we love being here. We'll see you next year. I have noticed that leather aprons are in right now. <laughs>